Welcome to the second installment of The Secrets of the Lions, a series of videos where I try to find something interesting about each station on the line. In this episode we look at the T2 Eppington and Inner West line. We started our journey at Leppington, which was opened on the 8th of February 2015. It appears that the railway goes further than in Leppington. The tracks go as far as Rossmore, where there is a train stabling facility. There will be most probably an additional extension out to the Western Sydney Airport heading out this way. At Edmondson Park, you can read about the local history from information on the pylons to the concourse. The retaining walls on the cutting also show sections of historical pictures of the area's past. Outside Edmondson Park Railway Station, you have a new shopping centre known as Ed Square. Like Leppington, Edmondson Park's station building has this wave-like design. Next stop is Glenfield. We have already covered Glenfield in my MacArthur via airport video, which you will find the link up here. Close by Kastrula Station is the Kastrula Powerhouse Arts Centre. It's currently closed until the 15th of November for renovations. There should be a link to this in the top right or in the description. Before 2012, the only way to access the powerhouse was by this level crossing. However, when the Southern Sydney Freight Line was built, the level crossing was closed and a new access road was built towards the north. At Liverpool, you can look out the eastern window of this paid concourse. You'll see these pylons going across the Georges River. The other side of the Georges River was once part of the Holsworthy military base. These pylons are what exists of a line through to the Army's Anzac Rifle Range station, which was roughly located at the corner of Anzac Road and Delphin Drive in Wattle Grove. The railway line was opened in 1918 for mainly second-hand materials. The line was officially closed in 1974. Liverpool, Liverpool Station was opened in 1856 and an early terminus to the New South Wales Government Railways. Warwick Farm Station was originally opened in 1889 as a private platform for William Forrester. It was originally called Warwick Park, but William Forrester changed the name to match the initials of his name. There is a cycleway from Liverpool to Parramatta that largely follows the railway. I'm walking between Warwick Farm and Cabramatta stations. Cabramatta Station is close to its vibrant centre. There are a plethora of good food options. Dr Google tells me that there are food tours that you can take with Cabramatta. Five times New South Wales Premier Sir Henry Parks resided in this area in a mansion he called Canley Grange after his birth town near Coventry in England. In 1878 he opened Canley Moat House Railway Station at which he had a private landing. The station was named Cowley Vale later. This house, built in 1886, is known as Westercott Cottage. The oldest railway building in New South Wales that's still standing is here at Fairfield. The building is the station master's cottage off platform number two. In the early days of the railways, the railways were more involved in transport of goods rather than passenger traffic. The second building on the eastern side, eastern side was built in 1860 to better cater for passenger traffic. The Fairfield area was rich in forests that were felled for timber. 
this crane was used at the Fairfield station to load the timber trains. The Nora station was originally financed by a Mrs. Susan McCready of Flynnwood, a local estate in Guildford. He thought a station in this area was, would open this area up. Who was Susan McCready? She was the wife of the local mayor and parliamentarian in the late 1890s. Guildford is the next stop. Sadly, almost no original buildings are in place at Guildford. The current buildings were built in the 1970s. The footbridge was built in 2002. Next stop, Marylands. Outside Maryland Station, we have this sculpture honouring the local history and the centenary of railway in Marylands. The bricks were from Sherwood Scrubs property which was owned by the Holroyd family, of which the local council was named after that time. In this area west of the current Granville Railway Station, the first stretch of railway in New South Wales was built. It was called Parramatta Junction. This is where the western line meets the southern line. Near the bridge in the distance is where the Granville train disaster occurred on the 18th of January 1977, resulting in the death of 83 people, Australia's worst railway disaster. Trains from Leppington to the city run a limited stops after Flemington Station, and all stations T2 line trains start from Parramatta and meet at Platform 3 and 4 at Granville. Platforms 1 and 2 are rarely used as trains often run express through Granville since the alteration to the T2 line. What appears to be a platform beyond Platform 1 used to be a parcels office. Next stop, Clyde. Clyde Station largely serves the railway yards which are close by. It also served as the junction for the Carlingford Line. Most trains from Clyde to Carlingford would depart from Platform 1. However, the Carlingford Line is now closed for conversion into the Parramatta Light Rail. It also strikes me weird that a junction station like Clyde does not have any lifts for transferring wheelchair passengers. Next stop is Auburn. A short walk outside Auburn Station, you arrive at Auburn Memorial Park. This shrine remembers the Gallipoli campaign and the relationship between the Australians and the Turks. Next station is the only station in New South Wales, if not Australia, with a platform zero. There is also displays on the local history at Lidcombe. I'll probably do some more on Lidcombe in another video, and it's the terminating station for the Bankstown line. Flemington is the next station. Flemington is close by the Flemington markets. These markets were once cattle sidings. These station buildings were built in the 1920s. The original Flemington station was further east of its current location. Homebush station was once the site of the New South Wales Government Garden Nursery, which grew shrubs and flower plants to supply station gardens around the system. I remember many years before Picton Station received its upgrades, there used to be a garden where the bus shelter is now. Next stop is Strathfield. Strathfield Station was opened as a halt in 1876 as Redmire. The name changed to Strathfield in 1886. Strathfield Station became a major station once the Northern Line was opened in 1886. Have you seen the beautiful building just before Central Station called the Mortuary Station? This platform at Strathfield Station once served as a mortuary platform 
for transferring bodies to Rookwood in a similar fashion. This Oliver Brown is the site of a goods way bridge which was in action at Burwood Station. The original Burwood Station was on the western side of Burwood Road. There is also Crane Hook at the front of one railway street where there used to be a post office and telegraph facility at the station. Croydon is the next stop. Croydon station was opened as Five Dock Station in January 1875 and changed names a year later. These plaques show the site of a concrete concourse bridge that spans the railway at Croydon. The New South Wales Government Railways used Croydon Station as a site for experimenting with concrete bridges. Upstairs in the concourse you have the schematic of the original bridge at Croydon. Once I was getting my coffee from the shop across the road, I saw these pictures of the local area. The site gives you more information on the original buildings for Croydon Railway Station. Next stop, Ashfield. Ashfield was largely re re redeveloped in 2002. This pedestrian subway was used as access to the platforms whilst the concourse was build being built. Platforms 1 and 2 are currently only used as express trains which do not stop at Ashfield. Summer Hill is the next stop. The suburb of Summer Hill has more than 100 properties which are heritage listed. In the 1880s, the Summer Hill and Lewisham area was quite an affluent area, attracting bankers and other businessmen with plenty of money. Given the social status of this area at the time, Lewisham Station was provided with brick fire pits in their waiting room, which they were not provided at other stations at the time. There is plenty to talk about at Peterson Station. Across from the main platform is the original station building built in 1885 and had alterations made in 1954. This siding which is cordoned off is the Sydney Trains Driver Training Facility. There is also this plaque about Henry Lawson being inspired to write the poem Faces in the Street from Petersham Station. At Stanmore Station, only platforms 2 and 3 are used for stopping services. There is also a waiting room with an old style seating. The eclectic suburb of Newtown is the next stop. The old exit to Newtown Station is closed off at the end of the platform. These stairs led to an old ticketing hall and station concourse which were built in 1892. Before 1892, Newtown Station was locate, located west of King Street. Outside Newtown Station, we have this mural along the exit to the street, which is railway and history where relevant. At McDonald Town, we have what appears to be one of the most narrow platforms I've seen in Sydney. There used to be another two platforms at McDonald Town. McDonald Town has one interesting story. On the 13th of July 1986, when John Philip Baxter, an 18 year old, and his younger brother painted McDonald Town pink and also glued a table, two chairs, and a pot plant on the station, which were also painted pink. Baxter did this to enhance the station which, from my memory going to tra on train trips with my grandmother, was always a desolate looking station. The State Railway Authority tried to claim damages but were rejected by the magistrate. Now we come to Redfern, which was originally called Everly, because the first Sydney terminus was known as Redfern until the terminus station was moved further north. Next stop is Central, where I'll end this video. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. If there are any interesting things I have missed about these stations I've covered today, please 
put them in the comments below. Bye-de-bye.